Asian guy on YouTube. Should probably do a music montage. <laughs> Today I am going to give you a little sermon, 6 minutes total, looking at 1 Samuel 17. You might want to pause and read it right now, because I ain't gonna waste my time reading it to you. So go on, get. Okay, we are looking at the story of David versus Goliath, the story of big guy versus little guy, mountain versus molehill, David versus... wait, that's what we're talking about. Everyone seems to know the story. Little kid throws rock at big guy's head, he wins the battle. It's a battle of good versus evil, of overcoming your enemies, of your trials. But is it really? The story of David and Goliath is like watching a movie from the middle. Why did he just shoot that guy? You may be able to understand what's going on, <laughs> but unless you see the bit before it, you won't actually understand what's going on in context. Ah, oh, that's why he just shot that guy. So let's rewind a little. Israel are in the promised land, and a guy called Samuel is judging over them. Israel keep getting invaded, so they plead with Samuel, who's getting old at this point, for a king, so they can be like the other nations. Now Samuel knows this is a bad idea. Kings take your stuff, they take your women, they take your children, and you're stuck paying for them. But Israel are insistent. We insist. Wait, was that the right word? Samuel reluctantly repeats their request to God, and God says to Samuel to obey their voice and make them a king. The biggest and the best looking guy in the land is a guy called Saul, and Saul is chosen to be king. Through Saul, God saves Israel from the Philistines and the Amalekites. Saul is the kind of king Israel wants, but not the kind of king God wants. He chooses to do things his own way, not obeying God or trusting God. And what's the result? God eventually rejects Saul, and his achievements begin to fade. God anoints for himself a new king, a different kind of king, a teenage boy named David. Now that you've got the backstory, let's get back into the passage. Israel and the Philistines are facing off again. Like seriously, this is nothing new. Israel has smashed the Philistines quite regularly by now. And Goliath, their champion, is challenging Israel's best to face off against him. You scared? Now knowing the first half of 1 Samuel, the obvious champion for Israel is King Saul. He's the biggest. He was meant to lead them in battle because he was their king. And Goliath stands there Rawr! calling out for a champion for 40 days. Rawr! You thought I was gonna leave that there for 40 days. Now enter David. David comes to the front line bearing his brother's gifts and when he hears about the Philistine on steroids, he says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of the Lord? Now his brothers are with him, and they get angry at him. And he repeats this line to everyone around him, and they all seem to get angry at him. And word gets to Saul about what David is saying, and Saul sends for him. The old king is unknowingly about to meet God's new appointed king. Now there's real disparity between the two. When Saul refuses to take charge and defend Israel, David offers to take on Goliath as soon as he meets Saul. Of course Saul would doubt him, but David offers his credentials. When David used to keep sheep for his father, a lion came and attacked his sheep. David killed the lion! And another time, a bear came and attacked his sheep. David killed the bear! David got skills. But most importantly, David recognises that the God who saved him from the lion and from the bear will save him from this Philistine. David trusts God even at impossible odds. We can't say the same though for Saul. Saul allows him to fight. He even dons him with his own personal armour, but it's kind of redundant because it's too big. David gets rid of it, picks up five stones and heads off to take on Goliath. Goliath is obviously not impressed with what he sees. What the flamin'? And I'm sure we get the PG rated version of his response. David responds confidently to why he will defeat Goliath. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. 
and that this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. David throws the rock, knocks out Goliath, pulls out his sword, and then chops off his head. Bad. Look, the point of the story isn't actually to overcome your obstacles by trusting in God, though there is some of that in there. The point is that God was showing a rebellious Israel what his king looked like, what his saviour looked like. But ultimately, David wasn't the one which God used to save us. Like you and me, he had his own sins, he had his own issues. But from David's line, a child is born. That child's name is Jesus. And like David, Jesus is an unlikely king. Through Jesus, God saves the world, not by sword and spear, but by sacrifice. See, we're not like David. We're actually more like Israel or Saul. We can't save ourselves. But God sends his son into the world to save us from our sins.